nations be well delivered from rain. Just one peace, God. Great is the Lord, my conqueror. He has never failed me yet. Through all my trials, tribulations, be well
people say, I'm great. It is to you we give you praise. We consider and realize tonight that you've done so much for us. So we lift up our hands in this sanctuary and we reverence you for your deities toward us, for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We offer you worship. We offer you sincere praise. Without me telling you what to say in the next five seconds, when you lift your hands and begin to speak all of his name just for a few moments, God, we adore you. We worship you. We bless your name. We glorify you. It's our desire tonight that you have your way. And move by your spirit and by your anointing. Send your word tonight. As only we know you can. Hallelujah. We will bless your name. And honor you through our worship. Hallelujah. Levites, come on, Judas, say, it is to you, say, it is to you, I give the glory, it is to you, I give the praise, for you have done, for you have done so much for me, and I will bless your holy name, it is to you tonight, it is to you. This is your soul. Bless your name. And I will. Bless your name. Forevermore. Forevermore. Right here, just begin to worship him for his deities. It is to you. It is to you. I give. It is to you. I give you praise. For you have done so. I will bless your name. And I will bless your holy name. It is to you. Holy Father. There is no one else. No one else like you. And I will. And I will bless your name. Bless your name.
to bless the name of the Lord for surely the presence of the Lord is here in this temple and we've come to worship and to magnify him I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord we're honored to have each and every one of you here worshiping with us on tonight and as our pastors and elders have just finished the preaching intensive they're entering in now to worship with us, being led by the chairman of our jurisdictional assembly, our ordination board, and the assistant superintendents of our jurisdiction. Entering into the building at this time are the assistant superintendents who aid our administrative assistants and superintendents and also our bishop in vetting churches and making sure that we are following the proper protocols. Their chairman is the assistant superintendent Terrell Wiggins and the vice is assistant superintendent Timothy Perkett. into the building at this time is the chairman of our superintendent's board, Superintendent Dwayne McNair and Vice Chairman Barry Winston as they lead in the superintendents that help govern our jurisdiction.
Administrative Assistant William Ward Jr. who is leading in the Administrative Assistance at this time. Tonight we come to bless the name of the Lord and to celebrate together. On tonight you will find yours truly expediting and then uh, we are headed and sponsored by the Greater Southwest District, the Staunton District, the Lynchburg District, the Portsmouth District, the Roanoke District, the Tri-City Districts, the Dominion District, and God First District. At this time, we come to have our invocation, which will be coming from Superintendent-Designee Timothy Will Williams, God First District, Core Response, the Choir, the Reading of the Old Testament Scripture, Superintendent-Designee Ray Johnson, the Dominion District, the Chant, District Choir, and the reading of the New Testament scripture, Assistant Superintendent Leon Taylor, Southwest District, and then followed by the chant, I will return at that time. My soul loves Jesus. My
God. We come saying thank you. Thank you for being so good. And thank you for being so kind. Thank you for how you bless us, Lord. Father, we give thy name the glory. And we give thy name the honor. For thou art God. Besides you, there is none other. We lift you up on tonight. We glorify you on tonight. We magnify you on tonight. Yes. Father, our heart says yes. Our mind says yes. Our will says yes. Yeah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless our bishop on tonight. Touch him in the name of Jesus. Bless the staff, oh Lord. Bless Mother Holmes. Touch her in Jesus' name. Father, bless her staff. Now heal on tonight. Dry up cancer on tonight. Make a way out of no way. Oh, tonight. Father, touch now. Touch from the pulpit. Touch in the congregation. Touch, oh God. Touch in the balcony. Touch in the parking lot. Touch in the vestibule. Show yourself mighty in Jesus' name. And we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. And we'll give you the praise. Come on, Zion, and shout it yes. Thank God and amen. Anybody believe him tonight? Come on, does anybody believe him tonight? Anybody still trust him tonight? Come on, would you magnify the Lord with me? Let us exalt his name together. David said these words in Psalms 27 for those of us who are under a little pressure. David said these words. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. David said, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came upon me, David said, to eat of my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, this was somebody in the balcony, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this one thing, in this one thing, in this one thing, the Bible said, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Our New Testament scripture is found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and I will be reading two verses in your hearing. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin with us so easily beset us, and let us run with 
patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord is blessed. take your seats come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord somebody said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord bless the name of the Lord for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations we're gonna praise him we're gonna give him the glory because he's worthy of all the praise he's worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated if you can, but I just have a small word of testimony for you on tonight before we go any further. In January, on January 24th, 2023, my wife was diagnosed with neuroleptic Parkinson's, which simply means that medication that she has been taking for years because of a vascular illness had begun to move into her brain and her nervous system. She could not walk. She could not talk. I tell people all the time I had to dress her and feed her. I like the dressing part. <laughs> Hallelujah. She could not do anything. Hallelujah. Like a babe. And when the therapist came to the house and she had to sign out on the therapy, it was like a two-year-old child writing on the pad her name. But on December the 22nd, she was admitted to the hospital. And on December 24th, she almost coded for a totally different reason. But when she coded, they found out she had an issue. And because the doctors that she was seeing here and there could not determine which medication was causing the Parkinson's. The last part of the year, she was in a wheelchair, had three walkers, could not do anything on her own. It was miserable, but God, but God. She stayed in the hospital from December 22nd until January 2nd. And you know what that means, we miss Christmas and we miss New Year's. But that night when she almost coded 3 a.m. in the morning, professional doctors and nurses and technicians came from everywhere. You'd have thought they were turning on the Christmas lights. And they discovered that she had a bowel obstruction. And when they pumped the blood and everything out of her, they discovered which medicine was causing the problem. When she left the hospital, Unlike the last time about eight years ago when we were in Rondo, she was in the hospital and she had only about 15% of blood in her body because it was only keeping the vital organs weren't running. I do not have all night to tell you the story. But God, amen. But on that occasion, when she came home, she had to have therapy to learn how to walk over a three-month period of time. But this time, January 3rd, January 2nd, when they took her out of the hospital, oh Lord, the nurse told me, you go downstairs and get the car. And I said, I'm going downstairs to get the car. And I was waiting, I was waiting, I was waiting, wondering if she would be able to walk again and if it would take three more months for her to have to learn how to walk all over again. So I came upstairs. 
where her room was and the nurse said, well, Mr. McNair, we had to pause for a minute because your wife wanted to take a shower. She walked out of the hospital. And today, the very wheelchair ramp that we built for her in the garage, she's walking up that ramp. And every time I look at her, I say, God is good. Hallelujah. I know he's a healer. I know he's a way maker. I know he will open doors. I know he will answer prayer. Hold on. Every time I think about it, I get excited. She was here today. She will be back tomorrow. Hallelujah, and we praise God for her. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out. I better go on. Testimony. Oh, I come through the valley and I've been through the blood. I was broken into pieces. See like this striking from above. But you know, I remember that he loves me and he cares. And I'm never more than I. Shout now! is coming. Hallelujah. The bishop is coming. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah,
Cody do it? Praise God. Did y'all hear that testimony? Do you hear what God has done? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Wait a minute. Do you know God had done great miracles here this week? Don't we thank God for our bishop? Our kind of Virginia too? And let me tell you this. Our bishop, he's not just our kind of Virginia too, but we have an our kind of bishop. One that's going where there are no paths and leaving a trail. He's not just going where the path is leaving. He's going where there is no path and leaving a trail. We are grateful to our God for our bishop and, and to all of you on tonight and how good God has been. You may be seeing how good God has been to us and God has kept us and he has brought us from a mighty long ways. And I don't know about you, we have felt the presence of the Lord in this building on tonight. We enjoyed that testimony and let us know that God still can work in miracles. He's not just working miracles out of the country, but he's working miracles right here under our bishop. Isn't he doing it tonight? We are grateful. We are grateful to God for what, 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 what he's doing for us. And again, we thank God so much for our bishop. And I tell you, I tell you, he, 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 he's just special. He, he's special. And, and what I love about him is, what we love about him is, he, he loves pray, to pray. He's a man that loves people. He, he, he loves people. And I don't know about you, you have so many people in there that don't love people, but he loves people. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, since I got the friends that told me to come up here, let me tell you, let me, let me tell you about our bishop. He's cool. He's calm, and he collected, and he get the job done. He get the job done, and I'm gonna tell you, well, doesn't he get the job done? Let me, let me tell you this as well. Let me tell you what you, about our bishop. Let me tell you what about our bishop. Our bishop, when we had the first meeting, we had the first meeting, first meeting, about 30, I guess about 35 or 40 us in the meeting, and we didn't know what to expect. We know when new when new uh, pro, when the president come in town, he changed the office office and bring his own administrative in, and uh, we just knew that Bishop was going to do the same. So we didn't know. We just know what he was doing. But when Bishop came in, he had the tables all around, and he had names of all other administrative assistants, superintendent, <laughs> the mother, the, the digger, whatever he had other names there. And not only did he have the names there, he gave all of us a red pretty box. I saw it before I left, Bishop. He gave, he, he, we didn't know what to, we didn't know what to make. He gave us a red pretty box. And when you opened that box, it was a gold pen in there with administrators, Lemuel Williams. <laughs> Whoever can think of something like that? 
Our bishop is the first that I've ever heard of come in position, change, and no, lose no churches. Come on, that's where they All the churches. You know when a new bishop come in town, you know people scatter, get their own things done. Even if people leave and think they can be a bishop too. But he came in, cool, and what he did, he took a, he took a word from the scripture, I think it's in Jeremiah, it said, with thy, with, thy, with, thy, with thy love. Anybody know what I'm talking about? With thy love have I drawn you. Bishop had that meeting, blow all us up, fed us with Chinese food. I don't need too much Chinese food, but that was good. <laughs> fed us with Chinese food, and gave us so much love, showed us so much love, that when we left the room, we didn't hear, uh, now, that's the first meeting I've ever been in, Bishop, that when it's over, you, you do not have a, her a negative remarks, a negative talk. <laughs> Everybody left out there, and they act like they've been drunk, drinking, but, but, but we had enough to drink the pot, but they act like they've been drinking, they were on the high cloud. <laughs> but that's the kind of leader that we have. We have a leader that he loves people. And let me say this to you, to the young people. Let me say this to the young preachers that, that pastors that taken over churches. Take a, lead, take, a, take a page from your leader, from our bishop. What, the, what bishop, they get, you send them to a church and they get in there and trying to change everything and do everything and tap and people leave and then they want somebody to come help them put it back together. Bishop came to a church and built on what was already there. Other leaders come to a church, they tear down what's already there and never get a chance to build it back up. But our bishop, he took what was there and gave Bishop Williams the highest respect, told him his son, he promoted his son, he gave promoted, look what he did, he promoted Bishop, um, what's the other bishop? Watson, promoted Bishop Watson, and brought all of us under his arm, and showed us love. That's what new pastors should do when you take over church. Give, give the first lady, give her a glass, a gold room, Get the children a gold room. Do it. He lift them up. And when you lift them up, as the bishop said, when you lift him up, lift them up, they're going to lift you up. Amen. Don't go there and tear down everything. And I, I told Bishop, I had, after we left the meeting, I called, I got a friend, a bishop. I have a friend, Bishop, in, in California. He's a jurisdiction bishop. And he knows Bishop, and Bishop knows him too. And I called him, I said, do you know what our bishop did? He said, what? I said, he had a meeting with us, gave us gold pins, and gave, fed us, and when all us left, didn't, you didn't hear a single negative word. How many times did I never heard that in my life? He said, well, how did he do it? I said, he did it whipping us with love. Love would take care of everything. Love would do it. What else I like about the bishop? He loves his family. Where's Sister Trina? Where, where First Lady Trina? First Lady Trina. A bishop knows this. I'm telling the other preachers. I'm telling the other pastor bishop. Okay. Bishop knows this. But Bishop knows that he could not have done it with First Lady Trina. Come on, give her some love in her absence. Look at somebody and say, it's so good to see you. Come on, say so tonight, we're going to have a ball. And tomorrow night, tomorrow morning, we don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to let God have his way. We're going to give God some praise right now. Come on, give God some praise right now. Give him some praise. No, you're not doing it. Come on, give him some praise. Give God some praise. You're not doing that. I didn't tell you to give me some praise. I told you to give God some praise. You understand? Just give God some praise for 30 seconds. Praise him like you're out of your mind. Look at him, tell him he's been good to you. He's been good to you, he's been kind to you. He kept us. Look where he brought us from. He brought us, he brought us. 
Bishop, we look at you now. We look at you, as Bishop, as Bishop Blake says, we look at you now. We see you today, but we, don't, we see you looking better in the future. Amen. Before the bishop comes, I have a very important announcement to make. There is a Hyundai, a dark blue Hyundai truck license plate VZM2450. Uh, you need to see security now. You're blocking the main entrance. So please, if you can, a dark blue Hyundai truck. Let us all stand on our feet. It is our esteemed pleasure to introduce to some and present to others a man of God of no mean reputation. We all know him and we love him. Our bishop, the Bishop Michael Burl Golden Jr. from the iconic Virginia Second. Hear ye him! Come on, everybody, let's give Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, we can do so much better than that. Praise God. Praise God. Help me lift it, everybody. Praise God. That's it. That's it. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, that's it, everybody. With one voice we worship. Get ready to go a little bit higher. Praise God. Everybody say it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want everybody lift your voice as we sing in the unison together. Praise, praise the God Almighty. We come to praise Him. Praise God. He's been mighty, mighty good. Praise God. Praise God. Sing it, praise, 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 praise God. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! 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 Oh, come on, let it come from your spirit. There's healing in that, yes. There's peace in that, yes. There's joy in that, yes. There's sobriety in that, yes. I love your name. I love. Oh, God knows I love it. I love it. I love that name. I love. Hello. Hello. You better let you sit down, but would you just touch two or three people on your way down and tell them God still going to make good on it. Just remind them. Just. God is still going to make good on it. 
You may be seated. I feel something in here. The real worshipers are still praising them. The real folk that are thankful are still screaming. The real folk that have dealt with some heartache and some trial and some test and some trauma, they're still giving him glory because they know he's been real, real. The devil didn't want you to get here tonight. He didn't want me to remind you. You have the victory. The victory walks with you. It talks with you. That in the vehicle that rolled with you. It's still sitting in your living room, your dining room, your kitchen. You ought to open your mouth and say, I have the victory. To learn how to talk to yourself, encourage yourself, lift yourself. You got to learn how to minister to yourself. That's why I can come to church on a Friday night under pressure and say, so glad I'm here. We got some folk that are sick. Bishop Watson and Administrative Assistant Mosby. And all I want you all to do, and there are others, all I want you to do is just shout healing. You're not going to kill the saints. You're not going to take the saints out. Somebody use your authority and shout healing. You may be seated, but don't think it's strange when I tell you healing just walked up the steps of their address. They just rang the doorbell. They just walked in the front door. And I got a feeling if you're sick in here, I dare you to lift your hands and say, it's going to be all right. Satan is a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. You're seated in the presence of God. I'm, I'm taking too much time, but I must be honest. I feel a dance in my knee and my ankle. This used to be a dance in church. Right about now, you ought to feel something moving in your spirit. You may be seated. Nothing but hands and feet. Holy Ghost, get in the choir. Get in the musicians. Get in the organist. Get in the keyboardist. Get in the drummer while we clap it out. Everything. He'll make it. He'll do what? He'll do it. He'll make it. Why the night is why the night. He'll take everything off. Y'all sit down. Y'all, y'all sit down. This is what we used to do on Friday night. Everything all right. Guess what? Only God can do it. 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 Hey! 
know the storm is passing over. No the what? No the I hear you talking about. Hear the storm is passing over. Storm is passing 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 Guess what? It won't be long now. It won't be long. Just peep around the corner. You can do it. You can do it. Just look around the corner. There it is. There it is. What you've been praying for. What you've been asking God for. It won't be long now. Now, I'm moving, but I am aggravated because I got some imposters in here. They're clapping their hands and they're moving their feet, but they're not doing anything but exercise. Because when you really feel the anointing, you don't need a drum, you don't need a bass guitar, you don't need a lead guitar, you don't need a click track. All you need is a memory. Look where he's brought me from. And if I'm talking about you, honey, I want you to praise those imposters off of your row. Lift your voice and give them glory. You may be seated. The Lord bless you real good. You may be seated. You may be seated. Y'all won't listen to instruction. No click track.
just want to praise you tonight. Just want to glorify you tonight. Just want to magnify you tonight. Just want to give you praise tonight. Just want to lift your name tonight. Your name is great. I said your name is great. Jesus, 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 there's something about name, Master, Savior, Jesus, that's it, like the after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all, let all, and Mama, but as you're seated all over this building, sit in this presence. in his presence. It is in this same spirit I shall call you to soul. Oh, God is doing a new thing. Now is springing forth. Tonight, those who give initially are not those who are not those who are without need. Tonight there are 47 people tonight that if the record would reflect, we stand in a miracle, need of a miracle right now. Tonight I decree and declare that our gift is making room for us. Not just in the earth, but also in the heavens. Will you repeat that after me? God's making room for me. Tonight I want 47 of you to sacrifice a gift of simply $100. I want you, I hear my wife over there worshiping. If she keep on, I'm going to run up that aisle. He welcomes us to his banqueting table. His banner over us. It's mighty nice to be on the Lord's side. I want those 47 persons to stand with that gift right now with me. You're standing with me. Standing with me. All over this building, there's at least one on every row. You're standing with me. And you 
God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Marcus Golden, and this is Pastor Terrell Wiggins. And we are extremely excited about what God is doing in this moment. Amen. I don't know about you, but I already, the Spirit has already started moving. I mean, in a magnificent way. Magnificent way. Oh, man. And we feel the power of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is such a pivotal moment for mm -hmm. us to begin to sow mm -hmm. into this yeah. anointing. Yes, sir. Now, many of you all that are watching now, man, I don't want you to drop off tonight. I want you to remain on the live tonight because it is in the sowing that God sees how committed you are Absolutely. to his word. Absolutely. And a lot of times God commissions us to give. And a lot of times we come to church and we treat God as if he doesn't deserve anything. But I was on my way here this evening and the Lord began to drop into my spirit the widow woman. She was getting ready to die. She was prepared to give her last. Yeah. And her mind had already been made up that this is the last thing mm -hmm. I'm going to have. Mm -hmm. But the Lord sent the prophet yes, to her home mm -hmm. to allow her to understand that what is her last mm -hmm. was getting ready to be her beginning. Oh my God. Yeah. And I want to encourage some of you all that are that's live, that's on our live audience now. The information is on the bottom of your screen, mm -hmm. and I want to encourage many of you all that today God is getting ready to make what you believe is your last, mm -hmm. your beginning. God's getting ready to multiply that little that you have in your hand. Yes, sir. And he's getting ready to make it much. The information is on the bottom of your screen, the ways that you can give, and I want many of you all, Bishop, let's ask for 47 of us mm -hmm. to give a $100 seat. Listen, you may be watching now on the live. Say, listen, I'm at home. But just because you are at home does not mean you do not. That's right. You cannot give. That's right. It means there are still opportunities Absolutely. and ways for you to sow into this glory. Absolutely. Pastor Wiggins, Superintendent, uh, 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 Assistant Superintendent Wiggins, can you just share with us a little bit about giving? Mm -hmm. Why is it important for us to give mm -hmm. in this anointing? Listen, I, I am sure that you all that are watching right now, you feel the anointing of God even where you are. And there's no way that you can sit in this level of the presence of God that is manifest in this place and even in your home and not take a moment and give in that moment. Let me explain to you that when the king is present and when you're in the presence of a king, it is our duty to make sure that we give and come with a gift. No, you may not be in the building, but there is still opportunity where you are to tap into this anointing. And here's the thing about giving in the anointing. When you give in this anointing, then you are opening up the portals of heaven. You're allowing the windows of heaven to be open for you and that he will begin to pour out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. Don't, don't, don't think that because you're not here, you can't give. That's a trick of the enemy. The same anointing that's here is with you right now and you can give in this moment. Don't miss this opportunity to seed into this moment. And you know, I just want to encourage all that's watching here mm -hmm. to get a $25 seat. Yeah, that's good. And that's as good. you begin to sow, mm -hmm. I want you to type in the comment section, I believe. Yes, sir. This is not a gift. This is not a gift. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right here in the sense where we are yeah. that yeah. God is getting ready to do the work. My God. I feel the Lord telling us now that He's getting ready to do it exceedingly. Abundantly. Abundantly. Yes, sir. Then you can even let us know a favor. I yes. want you now to do us a favor and to do yourself a favor. And I want you to begin to, uh, to sow in this moment. Yeah. I want you to begin to sow the information from the bottom of the mm -hmm. screen. It is uh, our cash app is there. Uh, our our uh, our PayPal is there. Our give up is there. And I want you to begin to sow in this moment a twenty dollar seat. And as you are sowing in this moment, mm -hmm. I want you to begin to say, I believe. Yeah. I want you now to begin to put up in the comment section, I believe. I as believe. you are sowing tonight, yeah. sow and say, I believe. 
Look at us getting ready to do yes, exceedingly. Yeah, abundantly. Listen, let me tell you something. And I, I've been dealing with this for a little while with my church. Is the importance when the scripture says he gives seed to the sower. Let, let me explain to you that when he gives seed to the sower, that means he only continues to give seed to those who sow. And it's important because we want the seed, but we don't want to sow it. And if you're not sowing the seed, he's not going to replenish the seed. So if you want more seed, you've got to sow into moments like this so he can keep on giving you seed. And one thing that I've learned is the old saints used to say, you can't be God given. No matter how hard you try, the more you give, the more he's going to give back to you. So listen, I don't know about you, but I want to keep getting seed. I, I, I want seed in my life. And in order to have that, I have to make sure I sow. And when you give, he said you'll be getting back, pressed down, shaken together, running over with men giving to your bosom. God is sending somebody to you. He's preparing someone for you right now to give what you never would have expected that he would give to you. He's preparing somebody right now because of your faith, because of your obedience, because you believe. Somebody, he's speaking to their spirit right now and letting them know that my child is in need of this and that or the other and they're preparing your blessing for you right now. Don't miss this moment. God is doing it for you right now. Absolutely. God's getting ready to shift that. My God. But I want you to believe in faith. Now to begin the service. Yes, sir. Because as God is getting ready to yes, shift your yes, performance, mm -hmm. He's getting ready to also shift your attitude. My God. He's getting ready to shift your attitude. Yeah, yeah. He's getting ready to change your attitude. My location. God. I hear God say, not only am I getting ready to change their physical attitude, mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to change their spiritual attitude. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Because I hear the Lord say that many of us have been sitting on the porch and being lame. My, but God yeah. said, He yes. has swallowed the water. Mm -hmm. This is your seed. To step in. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. This is your season yes, sir. to be blessed. Yes, this is your season. I don't have I don't have a prophecy to give you and a promise to give you, but the only promise that I can tell you mm -hmm. is that he gives seed to the soul. Yeah. Yeah. I want many of you all now, you're sitting at home and you're contemplating. You're on the couch. Some of you all have been going through pains mm -hmm. in your body. Mm -hmm. You need God to heal you. Absolutely. Listen, if you begin to sow, God will begin to work in your mm -hmm. life. There is nothing that he will withhold from you because you woke up right. Mm -hmm. And so I want to tell you, thank you, uh, Brother Wiggins. Uh, I want you to understand that in this moment, God's getting ready to do it. God's getting ready to open up the windows of heaven. Boy, you are a blessing. Yes, you don't have room enough to receive. Listen, as you are giving tonight, I want you to come back on the live. I want mm -hmm. you to hashtag I believe. I believe. We want to see you giving. We want to see that you are giving this moment, the presence of the Lord is here. Oh my God. The power of God is already in this room. Yes, sir. God has already began to fight on your behalf. Mm -hmm. He's fighting your battles. I hear the Lord saying in this moment that not only am I fighting your battles, but I'm shielding you. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting ready to bring you into a place, not that you're going to have more than enough, my God. but I'm getting ready to bring you into a place where I'm going to give you provision. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you favor. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you blessing, and I'm going to give you increase. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sister Lauren Ridley. She's sowing in this moment. I believe. Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Brother Wiggins. Yes, I, I believe you're I believe. sowing in this moment, and I want some more of you all to begin to sow. Do not allow the enemy to cause you to withhold That's right. your gift. That's right. Because this little gift that you're getting ready to give is going to open a big door. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Sometimes we're tempted not to give because we're not in the presence. We're not in the building. But let me tell you something. Jesus said that which you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Don't, don't wait to be seen giving. But how about you allow God to see you give from your cash app, from your PayPal, from your uh, giving for however you're giving let God see your heart it's all about the heart and give you're not paying for a blessing you're partnering with God to let him know that I thank you for what you're doing what you have done and what you're about to do right now no amount of money can we give God to pay him for what he's done but we just want to give God thanks and gratitude and what better way to do it than to give him our resources and that which is dear to our heart come on give at this moment don't hold it any longer the Lord's been tugging at your heart go ahead and give it go ahead and give it and I'm seeing more people starting to give, yeah, which means yeah. that God and you are coming into uh, 
now you're coming into commun not, not communication, but you're coming to agreement yeah. with what we are saying yes, and what God is saying. I see you, Brother Wright, sowing. I see you, Sister Lisa Wiggins, sowing. Yes, so I believe God. There are some more of you all out there today that can sow in this moment. Mm -hmm. Say, I believe God. Let God know God. I am believing that you're going to do whatever you said you're going to do. That's right. My goodness, I'm excited. I know that God's going to bless. I know that God's going to shift. I know God's going to move yeah. in your life. There is a pastor that is watching now. God wants to work in your ministry. Oh God. God wants to shift your ministry. I want you to sow a small gift tonight of $20 and watch how that Sunday is getting ready to yeah. blow your mind. I believe it. I feel it in my spirit that when you walk in your pulpit on Sunday, another level of anointing uh, is going to hit you like you never before. The power yes, of healing is going to be in your hands. Absolutely. And God's going to give you the power to command demons and devils to come out uh, of your sanctuary. Demons and devils to come out of your ministry. Demons and devils to come out of your auxiliaries. Yeah, yeah. Because God is giving you the power. Hallelujah. God's giving you the authority. God is giving you the power to command the demons to take his hands off. God is getting ready to increase. Yes, increase. Sir. Yes, sir. He is going yes. to increase. Yes. And that's one thing I want you to understand. Hold on just a little while longer. <laughs> Yes, sir. We are so excited. Listen, as you are sowing and you are tagging hashtag, I believe we want to just we want to recognize your gift tonight. But we want you to say, I believe tonight. I'm excited. I'm encouraged. Friday night. Listen, if you haven't, you may be at home laying down. You still got time yeah. to get here. You sure do. Dr. Tom Hall, Prophet Tom Hall, has just come into the building. And Lord have mercy. We're getting ready to receive the words like never before. It's going to be powerful I'm, tonight. Yes, yeah. I'm excited. After what we experienced last night Ooh. with Bishop Ellis. I mean, he let us have it last night and begin to open up to us and give us the power of declaration to let us know that there's some large fish coming your way. There's some large things and there's a lot that God is about to do in your life. But guess what? Guess what? How you open that up is by giving. Giving. You, when, when you give, he's going to give you more to give. He's going to continue to open up things to you. Don't miss out on your blessing, y'all. Come on. Don't miss your blessing. Take this time and give. employ your faith. Implore your faith. Give faith a job and let it work for you. Let it work for you. God is doing some great things in your lives and the more you keep giving, the more he's going to do for you. I, 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 you can trust my word. You can trust our word at that. Why? Because this is what we have gone through ourselves. This is experience for us and we can tell you by experience that when we give, God always takes care of you. Thank you. You are sowing in the spirit. Amen. There's some more you all that's sowing my God. You are sowing right now because you believe that God's going to do it. There's a healing that God's bringing to your family. Amen. I'm praying even now for that child that's suffering. Hallelujah. That child that's going through. That child that's frustrated with ailments. Hallelujah. That has not fully developed. My God. I pray now that God will begin to develop that child and astonish the doctors. God is still in the miracle yes, working business. Yes, he is. And I'm here to tell you that last night shifting my mentality in ministry, in yeah. kingdom, but not only in last night, mm -hmm. I am anticipating yeah. tonight. Oh, man. And I know that tomorrow at 10 o'clock, yeah. hallelujah, the mission is going to come with a mighty word yes, sir. From, from heaven like never before. Yes, sir. I hear the choir singing now. He woke me up this morning. No. Started me on my way. Put food, food on my, my table. table. Brought joy to my day. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I'm so glad yeah, man. God is working on our behalf. Absolutely. I'm going to call to remarks tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to precipitate it for the people of God. God bless you. Listen, I just want to encourage you to continue to watch and tune into the service of tonight. God is doing some great things, and I believe that there is a miracle waiting for you right where you are for you and your family. God bless you all. Love you so much. Don't forget to like, tag, and share. We love you. Love you.
God in Christ. And then we had Superintendent Mark Ellis and then Bishop Neil Ellis. And on tonight, we have the renowned prophet Todd Hall. Come on, let's celebrate him. Amen, amen. On tomorrow morning, our Sunday school session starts at 9.30. 9.30 on tomorrow morning. We want to meet you here in this place. And then finally, what's going to eclipse the whole meeting, we will hear the official message from none other than our jurisdictional bishop and the person of Bishop Michael B. Golden. Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Now, saints of God, saints of God, I encourage you tonight, before you lay down to sleep, let us pray a special prayer for our jurisdictional bishop for tomorrow. He has exerted much energy, much virtue on this week, and we want God to use him like never before. And so we want to pray that God will pour into him so that he can pour into us. Amen? God bless you. Also, uh, I want to take this personal privilege on behalf of our jurisdictional bishop, who is co-chairman of the International Men Perfecting Men Conference. <laughs> Brethren, we need to follow our leader. We need to support him by making plans to attend the Men Perfected Men Conference, which will be held May the 7th through the 9th in Mobile, Alabama. Will you be there? Come on, brothers, will you be there? To support our bishop. God bless. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We do praise God for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. Amen. And we thank God for all of you who have given. And following the choir selection, sermonic selection, we will have a video presentation. The word of God will come and we will be blessed. Comment and share expressions as we welcome Dr. Todd Hall. Thank you. 
be seated. All praises be to the King of Kings. If you know God is wonderful, clap your hands and praise Him that He's wonderful. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go in the house of the Lord. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, how many of you are just happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? There's a few things I need to do, and the reason why I'm not starting off yelling, because if I go up, I can't come down. That's what I have not perfected, even in my 60s. Once he gets me, you can't have me. So I'm going to pause and open up my phone and give honor to all these people that I made sure they text me. Y'all understand, don't you? We in a new age, I don't remember everybody's name. I'm not old, I just don't remember everybody's name. But prior to that, your neighbor that's sitting next to you came with some needs, some desires, and some prayers that are unanswered. If you are sensitive to other people's needs, clap for the success of your neighbor. Mean it, mean it, mean it. I want you healed, I want you set free. And I want you delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. What a mighty God we serve. Let me, it's good to be in the iconic uh, Virginia Second once again, one of the healthiest jurisdictions in the church of God in Christ. And I've preached in a lot of them this year, right now, leaving here to go to another one, going to Bishop Dillard, going to Bishop Thuston, going to everybody's whatever meeting, everybody. But this right here, to see a healthy coalition of brethren holding on to God, leading their families, Come on, ladies, don't do that to us. Don't do it. You're spending all our money. Don't do that now. You women ought to scream. Y'all spending all of our money, all our money. And I don't want anybody to take this wrong, and you may have to X this or edit this out of your streaming, because we're in a weird day. But I'm thanking God that I'm in a church, because I've been around the world now, that has bathrooms that say male and female. I'm so glad. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about? I am so glad. I said it in a respectable manner. I'm so glad that we have churches that might be big and grand, but they still hold on to the foundation of how our ancestors, I don't hear nobody raised us. Amen. I thank God. I thank God for so many men. Y'all can be seated to the Honorable Jurisdictional Bishop Prelate, one of our youngest bishops in the grand old Church of God in Christ, Bishop Michael Golden, Jr. Come on, give it to him. Why you doing that, lady? Trina, we love you. 
You may be seated. Let me go through the names and we'll clap for everyone at one time after this, except for one person, because I am Kojic, but this is some great names. And uh, every time I come, I'm bad with telephones, but y'all have, at least to me, a very patient event planner uh, who calls and he's so humble. I've known them for over 30 years, but I'm not a phone person. Am I the only one that's not a phone person? Yeah, I don't like talking on the telephone because certain people say the same thing 10 times. <laughs> you were in my spirit. God placed you on my heart. It's all the same. But he's patient with me because I went through some health issues that people thought was grand. I tried to tell people that because you're apostles, prophets, and bishops don't mean you don't get attacked. We all try to act like we impervious. No, I didn't have no life-threatening issues. But something happened that my foot just won't act right. So I had to shoe on again, trying to be grown because I was coming here and my right toe said, take it all. <laughs> so I put on an equivalent high heel shoe boot. But as you get older, things will pop up that you thought you would never have. And as you get older, they heal much slower. We heal by faith, but it takes time for faith to get in motion. Let me leave that alone. But I want to thank God for Bishop Philip Green being so kind and being so patient. Come on, y'all clap better. He's a hard worker. One of the first men to bring me to the Kojic Church in the state of Virginia, within the Kojic Church, was this gentle giant of a man. He wasn't even superintendent. We grew all, we all grew up into this. I don't know what you were when he and I was talking. But Bishop Samuel Braxton is such a kind man. Now, there is a man that has come from the country of Japan. Y'all didn't clap right for that because that's a long journey to come to Virginia or to America. I don't hear nobody. And when he stands, I want you to scream because I want them to hear it all the way over in Japan, all right? Bishop Carl Hodges, we want to celebrate you and thank you, sir, for being a part of us. Yeah, we have so many others. Senior Administrator Assistant, Joseph Williams, where are you? Stand, well, you don't have to stand, we know you. Amen, we thank God for him. Now, this one you do have to stand for. I've seen this family grow, but she is the supervisor of women. She is a great woman of God. Are y'all going to help me thank Mother Jacqueline Holmes? To all, to all the administrative assistants, to all of the superintendents, to all of the pastors and elders, we salute you all in Jesus' name. Now, I can't go into whatever I'm led to do without us mentioning one more name that supersedes all the names that I mentioned. Some call him wonderful, some call him counselor. I don't hear it, some call him mighty God. Grandma said, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Will you tell three people he's all right? I said he's all right. All right, you may be seated. I try them and I know them and I find them to be a friend. I know too much about him. On him I can depend, save my soul. Mashanda da Bakoshianda. Made me whole. There's none like him.
Gay? Stand up. I want to tell you something. Gay. Yeah. Step out here. Let me look at you. How are you? How are you? Good. How long have you been pastoring? And how long have you been married? That's okay. Don't let nobody start. No issue in your family. It's called forever. The Holy Spirit puts you, bring this down just a little and just a very little, in my spirit. I don't know if you dance in the Holy Ghost. You, you just look too swagged out to dance. Oh man, dress, we all dress, look at the bishop. But in your feet is your new property. Hold on. So the challenge is, if you ever said, I'm not one of those dancers, then you're not going to be one of those property owners either. Okay. Oh, oh. The same way God is going to get something out of you, he's never gotten. You're about to get something out of him you probably couldn't pay for. I don't want to describe the property because you're going to start having options. But when you dance, God said, I'm also going to fill your building quickly because he's giving you a word for the next generation. Are we jealous or are we happy? So when y'all play, my son over there, y'all get with this. Don't play too fast because he's new to this dance. And if you get uncomfortable dancing, wisely walk down and run. But I my Shandai, but I want you to attempt the dance because God says I want from him what I can't get. So at the count of three, we're gonna put it down for this brother. And I see keys coming out the sky. You better dance now, brother Gate. seated now you all know keep my monitors hot not the house so you all know he's really gonna get that property because he's got a wife and he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing you're getting a miracle be seated once again Every now and then I tend to, because I got to move quick, so I got to do everything in order, because I'm told I got to beat Bishop Ellis's time. <laughs> Last name is Phillips. Cut that shouting track off. Phillips. Who's Phillips? You are? Is there another one? Are there any more Phillips? I have no idea who I'm calling. Oh, oh, way in the back. Sir, how are you? Are you retired? Would you like to retire? The Holy Ghost says he's creating a plan where you work to shorten the length of your job you're gonna get 100% from God 
and God said, look for it quicker than you can bat your eyes. And somebody with a loud mouth or a scream for this man right here. But y'all are not related, are you? The other Philip, Phillips? All right, and who's Leanne? Leanne Phillips. She's a who? Caregiver? Oh, I, I don't know, because when I mentioned retirement for him, God said, I'm going to retire her too. And God says she gonna have to hire people because I'm gonna give her her own business with her own name on it and somebody ought to scream for whoever that is. Wait a minute, I hear the Lord. Leanne is watching. If Leanne is watching, you are born on September 23rd. You are born the month of September 23rd. If you are watching, please write in the comment section, God ain't lying. <laughs> to the other Phillips stand, God has enough to go around. How long have you been living at the address that you are in? Three years. Are you owning or renting? If I told you that because you stood up and was patient that God said at the scream of 200 people you're about to move in the next six months if you choose into your own house and somebody ought to scream as loud as you can Be seated. I'm giving you the condensed version of prophecy. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you still in the same church building? Can you stand up just a minute? Now, I have told most of the bishops over the past 10 years who have become bishops on the board and as primate that they would be in those positions. I can say that because when you're not lying, you can say it. I've been a lot of bishops, prophets, but they try to make a prophet seem like you can't be one if you're Kojic when the founder of this church was an apostle. So I'm a little confused. But before I talk to you, a man shook my hand. I told him he looked good. He was sitting there. He introduced me. Um, he was sitting right there. McNair. It was a very proper, short introduction. They messed up on my video and my tapes. Oh, no, I don't care. But I need to say something to him. Where is he? No, no, no. I need him. That's cool. He can walk smooth, Daddy. You can walk as smooth as you choose, but I need to say something to you. Hmm, somebody shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You don't have to come all the way up, but I want to say three words to you. You shook my hand when I was coming in, and I'm not one of the prophets who try to prove he can prophesy. I was shook your hand, and I complimented you, and I said, you don't age, you look good, and you properly said, well, thank you. Then you handed me a booklet for me to learn all the names. And I told you I was not able to do that from the booklet myself. But when I shook your hand, I kept hearing three words. I don't know where you're going to place them. I don't know why they're, they're coming in my ears real loud. As a matter of fact, you stay there, and I'm going to have you come here. And this is the way this is going to work. I'm going to say three words to him. 
If them three words does not get the reaction that it should out of him, I need the reaction out of you. You're going to be worth compatible to about $10 million when I'm finished talking to you. And it's, uh-oh, you got to, and it is my words to you that's going to make the three words come alive for him. I'm going to say these three words. I'm going to let it go. They can play for 30 seconds. You that want a piece of what I'm going to say to him, you got 30 seconds to dance and not wait on no Holy Ghost. Wait on faith. The Lord said when you shook my hand, he yelled in my ear. He said, paid in full. Everything. You that didn't dance, you missed it. Be seated. You missed it. We don't have time to make you do anything. Be seated. I want to prophesy to the jurisdictional bishop. If there's a gate on your sound that makes it go up and down, can you bypass that gate? I want to say it wisely because God says what he wants to do for you, he does not want it to be a hard task. And for him to do it the way that you would need him to do it, you will have to uh, untie too many strings. I'm talking business without telling problem, but I'm letting you know how deep I'm going in there, okay? But the Lord said, tell him, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them enough power and enough clout with the city that they're going to talk to him about all his properties. Tell him I'm going to keep making people give him properties until the city gives him whatever he asks for. God said you'll be able to find them right off the highway. Y'all ain't talking. Sometimes we get a board of highly intelligent people that we all need who want us to build what's already built. Good God, I feel the Holy Ghost for real. Some of us don't have time to get old building something that will be passed on to someone else. You know how many of our leaders died building? God did not call you Moses, he called you Joshua. Joshua does not die building. So God says he doesn't have to dance, but if he remembers how he used to. And I want to say this to you, and don't ask me as your uh, uncle next week, but God says all of these men keep them even though two of them are still against you. God said forget that. God said, let them remain. Don't preach them away. Don't frustrate them away. Don't envision or build the vision of where they just walk off. God said, let them see it with their eyes. He told them in the Bible through the prophet Elijah, you will see it but not eat. But those who stand by you, all of them are about to eat. Those who hold up your arms, those who pray for you from a pure place, they're all about to eat. A hallelujah. At the count of three, they will play their best. And then I'm going to the word of God for now. I believe, I believe, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What young lady in here is last name Mason? Who's Mason? If you don't run and scream, then I'm going to move on. I got to give it away to another young lady. Excuse me. Young lady, stand up. You. Stripes. Yes. How old are you? 
I'm going to have you, you probably won't like me, but you will. I'm going to have you walk down there, and when I tell you to dance, you're going to dance, because God says you're getting $90,000 worth of college tuition early to go to the school of your choice. Now, when I grew up, they said the oil drips. And if you're taller than who you follow, then that means you must bend down to get it, right? Yeah, baby, that's how you get it. We gonna bring that music for you. Come on, Bishop Green, what you doing? One, two, one. be seated. You may be seated. I don't know if this is online or in the main sanctuary. Dwayne Wright. Who's Dwayne Wright? I need all of you that are dealing with social media, I need y'all looking at the computers or the laptops that you are using and collaborate with me, because if we're gonna ask them for their money, they deserve a prophecy too. And the only way they can get it is if you're working with me. Dwayne Wright. You are about to become a very unusually wealthy, somebody that's online, not y'all, y'all shouldn't be on your phones, but those who are <laughs> delegated to be on their phones should be looking. Damien, with a I-A-N. Maybe I'm getting the names mixed up because the first letter of his name uses as a nickname with his last name, which calls him Dwight. Is he talking to you there? Ask him, do they call him Dwight? Oh, okay. <laughs> but ask him, do they call him Dwight? D-W-R-I-G-H-T. Yes. Um. What? Hold on. What's your name? What's your last name? Huh? No, you trying to sneak in. No, no, you're going down. Stay right here. If your wife is not named J J Nika, you married? Ask him what his wife is named if you're dealing with him. What y'all saying, y'all? Oh, that's, what now? Help me. Oh, 
Okay, so then you know them. All right, I'll take you over 20 people trying to. So you know them. Do you know them well enough to know whether they have a girl? Everybody's a prophet tonight. I want you to tell him if he's looking or not, I want you to help me because you're going to be worth 10 million, so you might as well talk to another millionaire. From one millionaire, y'all think I'm playing, to another millionaire, let him know I'm not insulting him. But a lot of the other persuasion people, the Europeans, that would normally show him favor won't fully invest in him because he's naming his business after his name. I think it's called something like the right insurance company. It's all right, this works in Japan too, I promise you. Oh, he a member of y'all's, oh! Well, tell him he and his wife need to talk about renaming the company where Everybody who actually likes him will invest in him, but they get afraid of African Americans who put things in their own name. But that's the way we leave an inheritance. Y'all can stay quiet, all of you employees. All of you eternal employees, you can be quiet. But all of you with ideas and have aspirations and know that your days of working for somebody are coming to an end, you need to be talking to me. And you will live in houses that you have not built. I didn't cut your prophecy off, but it'd get too personal, and the more I would talk, the more your secret enemies could plan. So we're gonna praise God for them his wife needs to open up a business as well. As a matter of fact, let her know this, and 30 women will jump in 10 men. If the devil had his way, she would have died on the table. The devil tried to almost make her regret having a child. But she gave birth to an angel. All of you that know this is the year your children shall be saved from whatever they're going through, you ought to scream and clap and give God glory. This is the be seated. Get your Bibles. Give me about 30 minutes. I don't care what addiction they have. I don't care if they're behind bars. I don't care if they're demon possessed with legion. Before 2024 is out, some of you don't believe this, God is going to deliver our children. That includes your grown children. No matter how old they are, they will always be our children. I was in the airport talking to His Grace the Honorable Bishop Neil Ellis. And he said to me, I left you a few crumbs for you to go clean it up, so. <laughs> Man of God, how you doing? So I, whatever's left, that's what we gonna pick up. But 
I want you to turn with me to a familiar passage of scripture found in the book of Luke, chapter 17. I'm going to ask 30 people on a regular basis to talk to me like I'm already preaching, and we will pronounce on you through the power of God, debt freeness. Now, don't take this wrong. This ain't cocky. It took a long time, but I can say it's possible because I'm living in that season. Church paid off, paid for everything. And I cannot say that it was of any goodness of my own. But a lot of people try to impart what they have no part of. And I'm telling 30 of you to 50 of you, I'm going to enlarge it, that's serious about living a life with no issues to just push the prophet. If you give him a glass of water, you shall receive, I hear the Holy Ghost again, the reward of a prophet. Look at somebody, say these two words. If they don't get happy, don't talk to them for three straight minutes. Just tell them debt free. Debt free. It's very important. I love this jurisdiction. He promised that our latter days would be greater than our beginnings. What you can't get from the government, God's already got it situated. The assurance of your insurance is his word. Somebody shout glory to God. Luke chapter 17, very famous, very, very familiar passage. My 30 members, I offer 20 more, will talk to me as if I'm preaching before I get there. And we'll move forward. Let me give you the backdrop so I don't repeat the style of my predecessor, the person who went before me. The story in the backdrop is about 10 lepers. What I want to say elementary for the 30 members who will scream and those who want to be a part of is your spots won't stop you. Some of you, there's a group of sanctified, pragmatic, dogmatic Christians that know so much about your past that they think your future has been disqualified. But the truth is, for my 30-member storefront church, he looked beyond when I said I was debt-free, I wanted to dance because I know that I don't deserve anything, especially if he didn't allow me to pay for all the sins that I've done. So I shall forever lift my eyes. I'm going to be a little old school tonight to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. Feel power over there for somebody. How marvelous. Come on, church of God in Christ. That grace that caught my falling soul. He looked. See, some of y'all ain't screaming because you think you perfect, but some through the waters. Some through the floods, some through great trials, but most of us, we know we made it because of the blood. Yeah. Grab your neighbor, sit him down, tell him we almost there, I promise you. So this sermon tonight is not for perfect people, it's for people that's a little spotty. And you do know the Church of God in Christ, which I am a member of. But the Church of God in Christ are the best. Because the only way you couldn't spot certain lepers is they dressed it up. 
they put on cosmetics. Yeah, the way you don't let folks see your blemishes, you use foundation. Why y'all ain't talking now? When you don't have full lips, you draw some. When you don't have baby hair, you put some on there. A young lady in my church for me. I said, that's pretty baby here. She said, Bishop, that ain't mine. I said, oh, Lord, y'all got to cut this up. A lot of you need to stop trying to impress people that are not worth impressing. They don't help you in any area of your life. They don't pay your bills. They don't help you with rent. Why do you care? Let me go old school. You can talk about me. Come on, as much as you please. This too old for some of y'all, but the old folk ain't talking. But the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. Look at somebody, high five and tell them the Lord will make a way somehow. I'm already preaching the sermon, but I'm going to read the scriptures, then I'm going to yell and let you go. But let me talk to this side and see if I have any support. If Jesus didn't walk away from it, why do you? <clears throat> see, your churches ain't full because you're turning away what you can't heal. Now, I want to talk about it. We don't do that in here. We don't dress like that in here. You got to catch the fish before you... Jesus! Some of these millennials, alphas and Zs, got folk who want to come to church. They just don't want to come to our church. So now God is raising up leaders that never went to Bible school seminary, but they know how to treat the lepers. So your church is full of leapers. But the lepers are on their way. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said the other day, don't y'all mention no names, and I'm not talking about it because it's not worth my time, but I will say this in the name of Jesus for 30 screamers and the rest you can join in. The church ain't whack. You can still sing for me. I'm going to still play your track, but the church ain't whack. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. And if my wife was ugly, you better not tell me. Don't talk about the wife of Jesus. The problem is we won't make space for the lepers, but we'll make space for the famous. Because they've got money and right now the lepers can't even find a job. Now, if anyone in here has a past, even though you may be delivered or out or still fighting, I just want you to look at someone, all of you that are honest, with your nice uh, clothes on, saint, saint, you know, nice hats and ties and things, and I want you to tell your neighbor, he talking about me. You understand that, right? <laughs> tell him, I ain't always been perfect. Go on, testify. Now tell him the devil's in the details. I ain't going to tell you what I did, but I will tell you that I did what I did, but I'm not what I've done. Now, I, I will. All right, I didn't hear nobody. I will inform you that some of the stuff y'all heard about me 30 years ago that you still talking about, I did it. Now, if you want to keep playing in the dirt, go on. God uses people in a more powerful way who have survived what should have killed them. Now tap your neighbor again. I'm about 20 minutes in. Tell him he's talking about me. 
Now, what I just told the pastors, even though you didn't respect what I said, is if you don't have the love as the pastor for the lost, get you an executive that does. You go on and pastor the church, but you can't pastor uh, where everybody's leaving. So you need somebody with the language, you can have the position. Now, let me come back. But you need somebody with the understanding of how to welcome lepers. Now, if y'all gonna stand up, please talk to me because I need Bishop Shear to say I preach tonight. But let's read it now. Then I'm gonna yell because I think you got it. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. You don't have to stand that he passed through. Luke 17 verse 11. Passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he entered into a certain village. There met him ten men that were lepers. Let me pause and say this for my 30 members. Before he calls them lepers, it lets you know they're men. And I want to talk to screamers. Underneath all the mess, you know there's a perfect individual that God is working on. Be careful that you don't call me by my label. That you don't brand me by my mistakes. You should have been there when he prophesied over my mama's womb and said, this shall be a prophet. Good God Almighty. The Holy Ghost is here. And they stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus! Master! Have mercy on us. Which means this sermon is not for a group of selfish people. One of you can get the rest of you delivered. I know you don't believe it. And why would y'all judge someone for doing what you just got delivered from? It's called compassion. Am I boring y'all? Well then come on, push me. I told you, don't let the 80% make me feel like I ain't preaching. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves, here's the problem, to the preacher. Find you a leader that can correctly diagnose your situation. And if you don't leave a service feeling like there's hope, you went to the wrong service. I'm already being hated on by my family, by my supervisor. I don't need to join a church full of haters doing the same thing. I need to go somewhere where I can leave saying there is hope. I think I'm born with the majority of you, but I'm going to do my job and get out of here. Came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. This is my last disruptive, disrespectful comment to those who are holding grudges mysteriously against a text that does not have you in it. This is your own conviction bothering you because you don't have a message for this day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me say this and see if Bishop will stomp his foot, see if my new brother worth 10 million will stomp his foot, see if my 30 member storefront church will scream loud and that is this. It's a shame that he didn't tell them go there and get healed. They had to get healed before they got there. There was a time when we said I can't wait to get to the house of God Come on, talk to me. Or just as soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm a, they couldn't wait. They said, Satan, you better hope I don't make it to church. That love for church is subsiding. 
it's receding. Like a bad hairline, it's just. <laughs> I want to say this to bring some resolve and some release and 100 people scream for one second. Prophets preach and give orders at the same time because you don't get a prophecy without participation. So I want to help you with that. Woman with the issue of blood had to crawl. Y'all ain't talk. The walls of Jericho needed a shout. Y'all ain't. So some of y'all want a prophecy, but you ain't doing the thing to get it activated. So I want to talk to people. Y'all gonna stop making true prophets look false when you're actually a false recipient. Because if you got cancer and God says you healed, you ought to start running and screaming. But you're waiting to see if you heal. As they went, I'm going to stick to the text, they saw that they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back. I said I was going to make a statement to bring some resolve and some relief. So let me say this and see if the, uh, 30 of you will scream at least five seconds loud and clap and stomp. And that's this. The church is about to become attractive again. Listen, so attractive that we're not going to have to learn from the club and the secular world. And we might even go back to giving honor to God to my pastor, since the pastor, missionary saints and friends. Because what we used to do is old to us, but it's new to them. See, some of y'all trying to go forward to find what's new when what's new is going back. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord. I want to preach to the place where I... Because I feel that I'm so far from you, Lord, but still I hear you calling me. The memories that I once knew, watch this way, those symptoms start to draw me. Renew my faith, renew my joy. And at the end it says, and dry my weeping eyes. But one of them, when he saw he was healed, come on, Holy Ghost, ride, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Which means for talkers, he had to put a praise on what he got to seal it. So some of you, you get the money, then you get broke again because you forgot to glorify God. Yeah, now all the screamers are being looked at rude by the silence of the lambs, right? That's because you silent folk think you're perfect. You think you've arrived until you go get your next checkup and hear news you thought could never happen to you. All of a sudden you want us to call a solemn assembly. Now you want to become friends with them folk who quicken and speak loud and hmm. fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. The problem is he was not church groomed. He was a stranger to this. Now, I could have called this for screamers, there's a stranger in my house, right? But, because we cold you, we love to be fancy. I could have. Y'all forgive her, that's my member. That's how my church talk to me whenever I preach. They online saying preach right now, Bishop, I tell you. Because I'm old school, say amen, somebody, shout glory. See, that's me. I ain't that wait for the hoop. Turn back with a loud voice, glorified God, went down, fell on his face, gave thanks. He was a Samaritan. 
Jesus proves that he remembers who he blesses who doesn't bless him because he asks him, were not there ten? How come you the only one screaming and jumping and leaping and crying? We're not there ten. Come on, y'all stay with the scripture. He said, where are the other nine? He said in my last two verses, they are not found to return to give glory to God, but this stranger. So he says to the stranger what he couldn't say to those who grew up in this, go thy way. Your faith. Not your church antics, your faith. Had made you whole. Be seated. Be seated. Then next time you stand, me and you just go to church. I got three, three topics because I don't know which one works. For the millennials, disease, the alphas. My topic is for my 30 members talking, let me clear my throat. Don't act so safe that y'all don't remember. Let me clear my throat. Da -da -da -da. I know y'all know it. Because it came from out here. When I preached in this church back in the days of Bishop Thurgood, it was my brothers and Teddy who brought the sound system for this church. So don't act like secular, don't support spiritual. See, once y'all stay too deep, you keep having to do hard work. All they want to know is they matter. That's it. And they want to know they matter when they're not writing a check. Or when you ain't secretly calling them and telling people that you don't know them. They... But it was called, let me clear my throat, stick to my notes and that'll, di and that'll condense everything. For the more educated people who like unraveling the text, and I want two folks to this, it's just called, I've got stage four. See, I, I, I do have those who still want to be debt free, right? But I told you, it came with a price. And for those who just know that God has to bless you now because you've been blessing him while you had nothing, but you didn't tell nobody, and you kept making what's bad look good, and you're not jealous of those being blessed who don't bless him, I'm giving you permission tonight to tell God something is wrong with the odds. All of them got a car and I didn't. I pay tithe. I go to church. I praise you. They sit there, don't move, don't praise you, don't give. It's not that we're jealous, but we're concerned. If I'm doing what the word says and they're not, why does it seem like the word is working for them? and not for me. I think I'm boring some people. Let me read my notes very quickly. 15 of you out of the 30 push me. The days of preaching just because we can are over. God's about to raise up leaders who can't preach but they can deliver. I'm trying to tell you. If you grew up in the church I grew up in and y'all did, and I don't know why some of y'all ain't talking, our ancestors could not preach, but they could cast out devils. They can put sight to the blind. Our ancestors could not put together any words. They barely had good English speaking grammar. But when they say, I got power, the devil knew that meant power. We're licensing too many people who can drive, but they don't have a load.
They can drive, but they can't pull no, but, but they can't pull nothing behind it. So because you can preach, children of preachers as I am, four generations, does not mean you should. God's about to bring preaching to make the church attractive again, which will be followed by signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. I don't hear nobody. Y'all watch these leaders behind me. Tell me if they talking about me. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall do this, that, and the other. Cast out demons if they eat any deadly thing that shall not hurt them. Speak with new tongues. It said, this is afforded, I wish I was in your country now, to the believer. Then he says, after he tells the disciples that, he goes down the mark down to the latter verses, said, and then they went forth preaching. But they had the power before they were preaching. Uh-oh, y'all are quiet. Don't wait on a mic and an appointment to be your first action. God says, if you're a believer and right now nobody want to hear you, make sure everybody around you know who you are. And if they're sick, say in the name of Jesus, and they shall lay hands upon the sick. Uh-oh, I feel God. And the, yep, there's about seven people up here with high blood, but you're going to be healed today. They shall lay hands. Don't worry. You can hide it with your dress and your posture, but you own these meds, and instead of hiding, you should have said thank you. See, what I'm trying to teach you is get out of that so-called, uh, I don't know what that is anymore. Don't dress it up. Give it up. They shall lay hands where did Bashinai upon the sick? Hallelujah. And the sick might recover? Let me show you how this works. All of you that know you have the Holy Ghost and you love God, all you got to do is touch a neighbor and there it goes. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to lay hands on no head or have a prayer line. We all got power. Touch me. And you shouldn't be picking who can touch you. This power is given not to a title, to the believer. Statistics prove for a few men who will talk to me that most folk in the Pentecostal black church who preach don't believe what they say. They preach it because they were raised up in it. They're repeat offenders. They're echoes, not an original voice. My mama told me. My daddy told me. That's fine. Now, what did you learn for yourself? Is he a healer or not? Can he give sight to the blind or not? Y'all ain't talking. See, can he resurrect the dead or not? I'm going to give you the mic, Bishop Philip. You can preach the rest of this. Please don't take what I'm about to say personal. That's one of my lines right there. The church has lost her voice. She has laryngitis. But bigger than that, talk to me, I'm gonna clean it up. They've not just lost their voice, it seems like we've lost the message. So maybe God took our voice because he does not like the message. If y'all standing up, I'm going to speak up because that tells me somebody's hearing me. What is the message? The message is found in two words, then I'll break it down, scream on this because it means something. The message is simply no matter what you preach, it must wind up at Jesus saves. Huh? And if Jesus 
Jesus saves, he needs clients that need to be saved from. If he's a healer, he needs clients that are sick. The church is being sued for too much recycling. Your church full with somebody else's church members. See, you, 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 you. You only get your position praying that somebody in it die. You know the church. I'm waiting on my turn. The church has lost her voice, Sean, and now it seems like they've lost the message. My grandmama and great-grandmama said this, and my grandparents was raised in Portsmouth. Y'all know Portsmouth, Virginia. It's simply as this, and get happy, to the utmost. Jesus saves. He will pick you up. I'm trying, and turn you around. Hallelujah. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners, I being one, plunge beneath that flood. They lose all their guilty stain. Let me hear F. I'll be there. They lose all. They lose all their guilty state. Along with that, Jesus saves for those who are with me, my 30 members, he restores. The greater thing he did that you forgot, he forgives. There's only one thing he cannot do. He cannot lie. See, the more you're praising, the closer you are to miracle. God is not a man. But if anybody judge you, remember the words of this old song. Tis no secret. Yep, somebody's going to help me preach back here. I heard it. What God can do. What he done for others. Don't be quiet now. He'll do for you. With his arms. Right about seven minutes before my short holler, I've got one more thing. It's written in red. You see my notes. I see y'all sneaking. You don't have to sneak. They right there. I'll, 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 I'll let y'all have them. One more thing I want to reach. You need a little humor in this day for the millennials. Y'all got to stop being so serious, looking so mean, thinking you can draw people. What I don't like about this text, and if this makes sense, then just touch my shoulders, Bishop, and I'll be glad. Everyone in this text are only connected because they have the same problem. deliver some of us from hanging around people because we share the same problems. God, make my next group of friends the solution. Oh, yeah. The problem with some of you is failure uh, seems to be allergic to success. And the only way some of you that are failing can look like success is you have to dress it up. Instead of just be honest with who's successful and say, show me the way. Your pride is killing you. My 
foot was giving me difficulty, Bishop Dwight. My, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 Sam, it was giving me difficulty. I, 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 don't, I don't know what it was. Went to the doctor. The doctor said, you're having a problem with swelling on your right leg, but your foot might have to be cut off. Now, this is the truth because we found you got a heart condition. Your heart does not pump. It's only working. Hear me now. Don't, don't, ha, ah, ooh, because I never believed the thing they said. So please, y'all hear me. They, they said 30%. Well, I don't know because I ain't got no gauge on the outside that say like the gas. That you, but I took my condition to the professional. What I did not know is, let me not say that either, that certain secular people are in it to first make as much money as possible. So they gotta see you to pay enough deductibles and, and, and y'all not gonna help me? I just told y'all they said I was dying and y'all ain't gonna talk to me? I ain't called nobody for prayer, not that I didn't need it. I would not start living my life based upon an announcement. Never had a breathing problem until after they told me it didn't work. Then I started waking up. I guess I'm the only one. See, I'm admitting my leprosy. What you saying? Because they put it in me. And then they said, take this prescription for three weeks. Take this prescription. Never had prescription in all my life. And I was like, am I actually popping pills for real? One in the morning, one at night, preferably with a meal. You obeyed the doctor. They then scheduled me for a procedure for my heart to go in, open it up, put a stent, or to put balloons, or possibly open heart surgery. They put me to sleep. See, folk know when you're lying, you either go through a certain area that I said no, so they wind up going through here, because I wasn't going to let them go through no other area. Cause I'm a real man. You just can't believe the mother's not praying. Back in the old church, the mother said, "Testify, baby." I, I, I. They was they put the juice in me. And it was talking to me, and I thought I was talking back. Went to sleep. Woke up in the recovery room with them. Very few three people who loved me. I said, did they do the surgery? They said, no. And I was coming out of it looking for it. I said, I said they put all the stuff on me. They said, yeah. I said, all of the CAT scans, all of the MRIs showed that I had it. The specialist, Dr. Vivek, cardiologist number one, walked in. He said, Dr. Hall, can I say something to you? I said, please make sense of this. He said, number one, he said, when you went under, you kept on talking. I said, what was I saying? He said, but I don't blah, 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 blah. I said, what now? He don't know I was tongue speaking. I didn't know it either. I said, did I say any words? He said, do you speak another language? Because you were just blah, 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 blah. See, some of y'all missing. He said, we injected more juice because we take you under slowly. He said, we got you all the way under where you shouldn't be able to say nothing. And you were just blah, 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 blah. He said, we went in. He said, this is my hand to God, and I made him write it so I can preach it later. Ten folk, my 30 members catch it. He said, we went in. He said, when I first test you, you had a hole, you had congestion, you had a torn valve. He said, when I went in, he said, I don't know, whoever you serving, you got a brand new heart. So let me say this. You think I care about a foot? See, some of y'all are showing people the little things that's wrong to throw off what's really going on. Sometimes your preaching is your cover-up. Sometimes that prayer thing on Facebook is a cover-up. 
I see folk online and people preaching on certain flyers. If the people that followed them knew what I knew, that's why they don't invite me because I know you. I don't know when you became that sanctified. I could follow you better if you would tell who's following you, which is the next generation, that you used to be a leper. This generation ain't following no phonies long. All right, let me get out of that and go straight to the preaching now. Straight to the preaching. They are in community by problems. I need God to now give you a new group of people in your life that will birth the solution. If you change your company, God will change your currency. I'm almost there. God has some of you broke until you break away from a certain group. See, you're not talking. I'm giving you your example. What I liked about my doctor, Dr. Vivek, who never even knew what tongue speaking was, he said to me what's in the scriptures, and a hundred folks start jumping and watch what happens for you. He said, you must have got healed on your way here. And they were cleansed as... Underneath that, I wrote this for 30 believers and 300 screamers and you online who will do it because of how crazy you are. The Lord told me to tell all of you who will jump and scream, it was done before you got here. You didn't come to church to get healed. You come to church to get a confirmation that you're already healed. Tell three people that, see how they act, tell them already healed. You hear me? You're already healed. Let me hear that air. My Lord, I'm coming. I'm going to skip and go all the way down to the end now. Here goes where stage four comes from. Leprosy comes in four stages. Just like stage four cancer. Once you hear from a specialist that you have stage four, you are close to hospice. If you can recover from stage four, you're a miracle on two feet. Now the one screaming must be a recovered person. See, and notice the church don't know how to handle that no more. We look at that like, what is she screaming for? <laughs> Once you hear that you have stage four, you're supposed to be preparing for an exit. But some of y'all, I'm almost at that F, should be excited that God has extended your stay. And with the last breath in your body, you should be saying words like, Father, I stretch. Yeah, that's it. My hands to thee. Now, all y'all that's going to look simple, you may be seated. But all of y'all that know that before you get where you live, certain things will have worked out for the better. 
if you believe what I'm trying to tell you, then I want you to grab somebody's hand to the right or the left of you and say, I came to Jesus. Now, if they said it real quiet, let that hand go and find somebody else. and say oh neighbor oh neighbor I came to Jesus just as I was I was weary I was worn and I was sad speak like you've been here but I found in him I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad you grab somebody's hand tonight with some power and say neighbor the way you're going to be healed tonight is you're talking to the right person tell them all the Bible gives us the solution it said where there's two or three
I'm about to close. It's Friday, but I'm about to close. Just look at somebody and tell them joy coming. I don't know why I'm stuck right here, but I am at closing. But about 200 of you that know you've been going through something private and God's been good enough to not take it public. And what the devil thought he could kill you with, God's about to promote you in it. I just want you to scream across the room like you're crazy and say, Joy, come in! That's that music that you got high. That ain't me, that's your music. I'm closing here. One, two, three, four, then we're gonna just hold hands for each other. Look at me. If I was home, I'd probably be cutting the fool a little bit. No, 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 Sean. You follow me. We're not cutting the food. When you're in other people's houses, you obey by that. Now, if that man behind me jump, or I don't want him to, or clap or move, then I'm going to cut the food because he the head of the house. But let me say these four things. Stage one of leprosy is spots. God allows people to start seeing what's not their business. When I say it, you gotta scream because I'm closing. When your business goes public, that's because God's about to take you public. He lets your problems introduce you. I couldn't hoop that, I gotta close. That's stage one. Some of you are over stage one because now you don't care what they say. Your spots are now looking like birthmarks. Stage two. Stage two is your phalanges, which are your toes and your fingers. They begin to get numb. They lose feeling. So some of you are in stage two of leprosy because now you go to church, but you don't feel nothing. About to close, about to close. Everything is a show, but you're actually on the inside empty. That's why your dance lasts 30 seconds instead of three minutes. But in the old church, they would jump and somebody put a circle around you and they would keep on initiating. Go ahead and praise him. Now they look at you like, sit down and stop jumping. You don't know what's going on underneath all of this. Phalanges, you start losing feelings. So now you know you're stage two. Stage three, for those who will scream, is uh, the parts that are losing feelings fall off. Which means people who used to go to church are now falling off. There's a disconnection. I watch online, but I ain't coming. So now you got to hire young people to help you know how to keep an invisible membership. All the old preachers trying to create reels of them dancing. We too old for dance reels, but... But listen to me. You are but listen. Stage three, things start falling off. Disconnection. Stage four, and I close, and this is where I need not a 30 member, 50 member loud church, is the way that they know they're in stage four and they're about to die, they lose their voice. The situation 
attacks the vocal cord. So we got preachers that's got 30 enough, 30 minutes of good teaching, but no praise and worship after that. They can only give you enough to get the message out, but not enough to get what's needed to God from you to God. God did not create us to preach. He created us to praise. He called us to preach. He did not create me to prophesy. He created me to worship and he called me to prophesy. The way you know for screamers when you get to heaven won't be no more preaching. Won't be no more prophesying. But if you think you ain't going to praise him up there, you ain't going. The last creature that wouldn't praise got kicked out named Satan. Now, stage four, it attacks the vocal cords. And I close. So, they cannot. It, it, it hurts them to say, glory. It, it hurts. So everybody's church is sounding like this. Come on, give him worship. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everybody in church looks like they're going to the gym. They go, but they don't work out. I'm closing. Stop me. It hurts. So scripture says this, and we bring it in and we try it. It took 10 lepers to recognize that the cure was in proximity. And it took 10 of their hurt voices to get one man's attention. Hold on, my close. If anyone around you will join with your voice, God said, I'll give you my undivided attention. You cannot get this on your own. Shh. All right, all right, listen. Listen, see, this is proof that you're not crazy. With all that yelling, when I said, listen, you obey. So why are screamers out of order? Why are we considered to be wild? Undisciplined. In the clothes, 10 screamed. And the Bible says he only saw them because he heard them. You can take me back to my room. Thank you for bringing me. He only saw them after he heard them. Why you want God to see you, but he can't hear from you? If you want to see a doctor, you need to make an appointment. Last thing I'm saying for all of you who want to be debt free for real and heal, hear me and give me your undivided attention. All nine were cleansed. Only one was healed. Hold on. All nine, all 10 were cleansed, but only one so he was healed. When he saw he was healed, he went back to Jesus to prove to us through the text, look, how he knew he was healed. When I do this, anybody crazy now who don't praise him, it's you, but here it goes. The Bible said when he got to Jesus, and you can stomp your right foot, he cried out with a loud voice, which meant he didn't need nine more voices. Because now it didn't hurt him to scream. Why does it hurt you so much to give God loud public praise? What does that do to your person? To your ego? Maybe you, maybe you should have stayed in the choir if you were louder in the choir. Why did you leave your voice at your lowest position? One day I've decided I'm finally going to get married, I'm older, but I'm going to do this. But let me tell you something. 
when I come to preach for y'all, if you still bring me, she'll be fly, she'll be dressed, but she'll be loud. Yes, when I get her, she'll heck of her. That's how she gonna be. Because you need somebody when the devil attacks your throat. Two quiet people don't live in miracles. That's all I'm going to tell you. You don't have to take my word. Do a personal. Uh, what'd you call it? Yeah, evaluation of yourself. I close right here. Make, and make sure you're near someone that's serious. He screamed with a loud voice. When he found out he had no pain, he then stayed and bowed down. If you read the old canon and you're a reader, it says this, he saw he was healed, not felt it. Mm. Saw it. Mm. If we take that word in the Greek literally, what it would suggest, y'all ain't gonna believe this, is that while he was coming back, his spots left. And as he got closer to Jesus, finger grew. As he got closer, feelings came back. Oh, y'all real quiet right here. So all of your restoration is in your throat. Y'all eat. Yeah, yeah. So let me clear. Not all of you stand and hold hands with someone. The infection in the church is not in preaching, not in hands, not in wanting. It's in your throats. That's why he tells you enter his gates with thanksgiving. Then he said, make a joyful. You don't have to make sense. You got to make sound. I paid $8,500 on something that I did not have the money to spend that amount of money on. I didn't say I didn't have the money, but not for that. Something came up, I'm prophesying, that the money I have is not allocated for such a thing. And the Lord said, Todd, I said, yay, Lord. I just got my young crowd back because y'all too deep. He said, Todd, I said, yay, Lord. He said, pay them in full. I said, nay, Lord. Mm -mm. $8,500 is not something you just shake a stick at, even if you're wealthy, if you're a good steward, you want money to go where it means the most. All right, I'm now lost everybody. I gave the $8,500, then a, a, a member of mine hit me on the text. I was out with some friends prior to coming here, and the text read, I'm gonna see what scream says, Pastor, I need to see you before you get out of town. Now this member's a good tither. Says, uh, I need to get my tithe in your hand. And I was like, all right, but I know what it generally is, right? So I was like, all right, where are you? I didn't want to tell the person where I was, but, but the Lord said, tell them. I said, okay. They showed up, they went in their envelope and they gave me their tithe. And because we are people of stewardship, and integrity, I just put it in my bag and I forgot about it. That was it. I got home and some said, open the bag. Now that morning I gave 8,500. By that night, it had come back. And the Lord said, prophesy everything you ever lost that you had to use on something else? Oh, y'all, or someone else? God said, I'm about to make it come right back to you. I got it back good measure. Press down. If the person near you is still excited, I guarantee you, look at Brother Hall. Within a week, you're going to have more back than you ever had when you started. 
But if you are with somebody acting all debonair and deaverish, I, I, I really, tonight it's in your throat. All right, we're about to close. Listen, I want you to, because I find you to be a very astute person. You think I forgot, but when I was going through, no one even knew I was going through because I didn't announce it, but you called my phone and prayed. Yeah. That is what made me go, because I wasn't going nowhere. You called my phone, left it on the message, speaking in tongues and everything. I said, what is going on? And God said, I revealed what I needed to to who I needed to reveal it to. So I want to say to you, I, I, I uh, want to tell you that God says, tell you when you go home, write three things you want him to do. Amen. Write them in the order that you want him to do it. Amen. Are you old enough to go to college? Did you go? Why not? Talk loud. Couldn't make up your mind. I'm going to make up your mind for you. Who are you related to in here? Godmother? The reason why he didn't go to college is we are who we hang out with. I'm going to have you go down there by yourself with a group of men, at least nine more men, who know you've been there before in the place of uncertainty, in the place of I should have and didn't. And when those nine men get around you and scream, if you scream, God said, I'm going to give you everything back that you deserve. I wish I could find quick nine young men or men when he get down there. Make sure you write it in the order of your priority. God says you can write things even if they go back as far as 15 years. God says you have been faithful over few things. You have not even voiced some of the things that you should have voiced. God said, tell him I've given him the ministry of help, but I also made sure he had laryngitis before I opened up his mouth. God said, by 2025, you will have a voice in a position that you ain't never thought of in your life. God said, yeah. Okay, hold on. God said, I don't know what to mean. He said, tell him, even though there are three people in here from your family trying to figure this out, God said, I've been holding the crown with his name on it. I told you something, I won't say what I told you. And you sat there and you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told you who you reminded me of and you politely, nicely said, yeah, right? This is what the Lord told me, and we ain't even in that day anymore. God says to say these three words to you, if you can interpret it, or I'll text you, and you praise them with your mouth, God said, I'll put you on the express train. He said, when I re-release the world and the church back to the place where it's fully attractive, he said, at that day, lights, cameras, action. God said, you're going all the way. detect some jealousy somewhere. Now you're a young man, when you got down there, did they scream loud enough? Be honest. Oh, okay, y'all haven't yet. Oh, okay, because I started to find a group for him. Let me see the nine hands. That's nine? All right. At the count of three, we're going to let y'all scream. The women going to scream louder than us. In about two months, your life going to be right back on the right track. Y'all got them. Do your thing.
Y'all see that your screaming is destroying yokes off of that young man? All right, we're closing. Hold hands with someone and you cannot catch anything from them that you've already had. So don't treat anyone like they are infected. I can touch people from all walks of life because I've had an infection before. And my whole walk, Dr. Braxton, is if he did it for me, then now he's using me as an antibiotic for others. So when I'm trying to retire from traveling, my appointments are coming back up. Yes, sir. One of my largest appointments in the future, you catch this in your spirit, is in November. I didn't say nothing, but you heard me. And on that day, I will clear my throat. But people that can't scream with you on your way should not yell at you when you arrive. That's the problem. You're holding the hand of a, of a debt-free child of God. I love you, young man. I love you. I'll see you at the top, I promise. Encourage your neighbor with something. Tell them, I'll see you at the top. Just go and tell them. Tell them, we've been at the bottom hanging out long enough. Yeah, we can't hang out just with our problems. We got to hang out in our successes. Stop calling me when the bottom falls out. Holler at me when you go to the top. I'm pressing on the upward way. Play something soft over there. New heights I'm gaining every day. No higher plane that I have found. Young man with the earring, you got a driver's license? Do you have a driver's license? Is it clean? I can tell you that it's not because I see it on the bricks. But what I'm going to tell you is I never bring out a spot if God ain't about to wipe it away. The Lord said, if you get down there slowly and run and scream, God said, not only a clean license, a new car coming around the block too. Go down there, let, boy, get on out of there. Sometimes you got to coach that generation. Come down the middle aisle. Stop right there. Do you drive? Have you almost been in a car wreck? When was it? Huh? The Lord said, tell him the reason why he brought him out is tell him he should have been running because he should have died in that car wreck. He said, but I pushed it to the left. Y'all ain't talking. The Lord said, tell you. What kind of job are you looking for? You're in the Navy presently? How long you been in there? 2018, you gonna stay in there? For how long? Say it again. 20 at least. Can I ask you two more questions? Why? Because it's stable. What if I told you, you scared of personal success? That you took, which was a good way, but a safe way out of what storms would have done because of your family. See, you're about to cry. 
You see, I see. You can, though, when you're ready, after serving a certain amount of time, come out. You can. I'm going to tell you, run one more time and rethink your career. Because when you ran, the Lord said, I'm going to restore him, his family, and I'm going to put more money in his pocket than he ever seen in his life. You may not live in Virginia, but you ain't going home. Run one more time. Yeah, he run like he in the Navy. Hold hand. Still praying as on upward bound. Lord, plant our feet on higher ground. Hey, where's your wife? Yeah, what's her name? Kasaya, where are you? That's your wife? Have I ever prophesied to you? Because the Lord said when he ran by you, you began to be enamored somewhat by his love to run like that. Which simply means he may have received what the prophet was saying. So the Lord said, tell you with a camera in your hand. If you were to run, God said you will rent one house and buy another. That's how you're doing that. I knew his run would have some swag to it, though. Now, I, I want you to stop because we're going. Do you believe that your wife has prayed for another house? Oh, you know for a fact. Because I want to bring no friction within the family. So you know for a fact, how long have y'all been married? 20 years in August. Oh yeah, that's worth it. Oh yeah. When you ran, the Lord says, tell you this. Move in the neighborhood that they say you can't. God says, you drive by this place at least six days a week. He said, every day. God says, it's out of a price range, it's out of a race range, but God says, keys are coming to your hands. And someone with a loud mouth. Bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm about to challenge the men to do one thing and the women to do another. I need, y'all gonna think I'm playing, I need 80% of both genders to do what I ask you to do and watch what happens about time we all get home. I won't get home until Sunday. You will get home tonight. I'm... The word is sozo. Say that word with me, sozo. Sozo is the Greek word for healed in that text. Sozo also means what you got delivered from can never come back. So the other nine can get it back. But this one will never ever go through what he went through again. I word it like this for the screamers and the Egyptians you see today you will see them how long? Forever. He gonna say they gonna be debt free forever. I wonder if that could ever happen. And so it shall. So let it be written. Close your eyes. I gave as soon as you asked about offering, Bishop uh, 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 Philip will tell you, I pulled my money right out. I was about to stand up, but I didn't see nobody else standing. He said, we're not standing because we're giving more. I said, okay, let me go get this now. <laughs> I didn't understand because 
I'm like people, like sheep, like sheep, like people. I never expect people to do what I will not do. That's even in my church. My church loves me. I'm a challenging pastor because I tell them if God is doing it for me and you're seeing it, you need to start repeating it. Don't question me. Follow me. We follow success. We don't question it. Y'all ain't talking. Come on, hold somebody's hand. You are not the only one that's going to be debt free up in here. What you have will be transferred. I'm going to ask literally, and the men going to get mad first, but I'm going to ask every man to repeat what we've done. I was going to ask for $200 during the offering. When he said 100 the Lord said, get the other. I said, okay. I, I don't think that's a lot of money when you consider um, what your shoes cost and your, the food you eat all week, what goes into the gas tank for a week. Your car almost take $90. To fill up, and you ain't grateful that gas ain't no longer five dollars. But if we don't repent and start blessing God, gas might go up to six dollars, and we all gonna be riding bikes. But as for me and my house, when I give, I never give for today, I give for what's coming in the future, and that's the truth. A hundred men are gonna give a hundred dollars, a hundred women are going to give fifty. This is one of the greatest jurisdictions I met what I said that I ever uh, came to preach was just so healthy and it has a lot of legacy attached to it. And y'all keep it alive. But your giving has to increase because success is not just known by who's in the seat, but what who's in the seat does. I'm going to tell you some of your money has leprosy. It's time to get it cured. I'm still waiting on my 100%. You ain't getting it because you won't give God 10. You follow? So I'm very hard in my church for tithing. It's not because we need money because our church is paid for. We need money to build a new one because I paid for the first one. They're going to buy the next one. That's what I told them. I bought you eight acres I, I built, and, and I paid for you a church. The next one, y'all going to build right on this land. I ain't giving you 10 cents. I probably give something, but the Lord said, if they do it without resolve and without hesitation, tell them that's how quick I'm going to do what I have planned. Tell them if they think about what I just asked for, tell them I'll think about what I just said. The same way, the same way you give us the same way to come back. There was a young lady upstairs. And she can dance. Right now, she's moving her shoulders. She's playing around, going like this. She's sitting down. Stand up. You just bowed all the way down. Stand up. Squeeze your, uh, uh, scream your name out. Who's your parents? Are they here? Who? All right. Scream your parents' name. That's your daughter? Tell her clear her throat. What's your daddy name? Oh, okay. See, you feel, you feel crazy screaming in church, but not when you're with your friends. What I want to say is, when she was up there earlier dancing, not playing around, she think I'm throwing her under the bus, but I'm not. But several times when the music was playing, she was upstairs dancing. She must have a love for music or moving. Excuse me? Yeah, that's us. When she was dancing and screaming, the Lord said, tell whoever her parents are, I got to give them a new home because I got to give her a new school. The Lord says, I got to spare her from her company, so I'm going to upgrade your house to upgrade her education. Are y'all happy for what God is doing? And he does not have to give an offering for that. That is God's word. God says, I'm going to protect her 
by putting you in a better district, better area, better zip code, I have to protect her. I need 100 men to get the $100. I don't care if it's by check or whatever, whatever means of giving. When I say get in this aisle, I need to see it full of lepers, people who know my money is funny, but God, if you just get the infection out of my money, there are other things I can do for me, my wife, my children, my business. I need the infected $100. Get to the center aisle. Watch God. And don't none of the wives roll your eyes at your husband. You men better hurry. Young men too, not just old men. Young men. Michael McIntyre? Who's McIntyre? You don't have to give, but if you had $100 and you gave it, you would have owned one of the greatest janitorial services in the world. What do you do for a living right now? What do you do for the school system? Oh, you're a custodian. Oh, okay. All right. All you men that hear what I'm telling you better hurry. Hey, I'm just trying to help push y'all in the right direction. You have 30 seconds. Women, you all are going to get 50. Get it in advance, but don't move. I know we're going to be embarrassed. To those who are walking out during the offering, don't get offended. Keep walking, but that's like the other nine. When the Lord presents a challenge, you should walk towards the challenge. And any man still coming, you don't have to walk to the back to be on the line. You can just get right up front with all your brothers. You have less than 20 seconds. Somebody tell God thank you. Tell God thank you again. We have someone to my right and left who will help you with your electronic transactions. Everything else will be at the table. Sisters, when I tell the men to come, I just want you to clap 30 seconds fast and happy as if we just got $10 million a piece. Can you do it? Come on, brothers, and let's start giving. Come on, brothers. Come on. You that are online, we want you to participate. All 400, 500 of you, you should be respectful enough that if you eat, leave a tip. If you eat the meal, you should also want to be a part of the conclusion. So into good ground, and this jurisdiction, this iconic jurisdiction, is good ground. Sisters, clap one more time. That was quick, but I appreciate you. So what we need, a new hip? The legs get numb when you stand a long time. You remember when I prayed for you years ago? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We got too many years in for this. I'm going to do it the old school way. Point your hands up here towards Bishop Braxton. Let's see if God could turn us all down. No, no, you stay there. This one prayer is for you, all of us. Let's see if he can ignore all of us. And I'm going to ask you to repeat after me loud, and I'm going to ask God in two weeks to start bringing your tissues back and to change some of the nerves that are damaged. It's really happening from your back. Something is half bulged like sciatic, something. Oh, it's a degenerative disc. See, because I can feel it now that I'm standing here. But there's, there's nothing God can't do. 
I want you all to repeat after me as loud as you can. By his stripes, By his stripes ye, are ye are healed. Now notice, we all shouted. Every woman who would get 50, please crowd that center aisle. I know y'all want to sit and do it by phone, but God says he wants the world to see what obedience looks like. And I knew we were going to look embarrassed too, but that's okay. Embarrass us in a healthy way. Brothers, can y'all clap for these sisters real quick through here? Y'all ain't gonna put no mouth on that clap? I need 100 women to move as quick as you can. Cause women ain't gonna stand in the line long, so I can't hold them. I got like 20 seconds on the clock. I understand my mama was a first lady, grandmama, I know how this works. But just picture, y'all are being seen with your hats and everything online right now. Everybody knows. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory to God. Does your son have a business name? Where is it? What, he's Michael too, right? Yes, Where is it? Wave at me. Hurry up, hurry up, run. Do you have a business name, an LLC? What is the business called? MG3 Graphics. The Lord says, tell you in front of everybody, you're gonna need an LLC because you're going to have to put three different businesses underneath that LLC. God says, you're about to get called by a company to come do the biggest photography gig you have ever done in your absolute life. Are y'all jealous or happy? And your prayer, even though you're Kojic with Kojic parents, is, Lord, I need you to bless me enough to take care of them. God says, tell you, requests honored. You're going to get calls outside of just church pictures. You're going into the business sector with your cameras. And you're going to need different names because you're going to have to know how to put your money where you need it to be. That's how I'm going to say that. Start coming, women of God. Can, brothers, can we clap at least one minute for our sisters and wives and babies, mamas and grandparents and Play something nice over there. The powers that be is about to come. Keep on, that's not long enough. Y'all stop that. Now that was better. I promise you that that was better. Choir director still here? Have them sing something softly as I bring the jurisdictional bishop this way. How many will pray for Brother Hall? I'm talking about myself. Will you pray for me? Pray that God will totally cover me because a lot of preachers don't ask for prayer. Nothing's wrong. I just know that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous, they avail if much. Pray for me because tomorrow I got to preach to a whole church full of Z's and Alphas. I need prayer. I need prayer. Can y'all understand that I'm coming from real sanctified to whatever I'm going to next? I need your prayers. And if you know anybody in Baltimore, tell them go online and meet us on Oliver Street, East Oliver Street. We're going to East Baltimore. That's a rough neighborhood, but God's about to bring peace to the city of Baltimore. I want you to stand on your feet in honor and deference. Regardless of who's coming, I want to say the name of the leader. When I say his name, you are to clap and not stop until you understand God has given you the greatest leader this side of heaven. His grace, the Honorable Bishop 
Michael Golden Jr. Would y'all do that? Let us remain standing. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Meet us tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school. Get here at 9.30, 9.30 for Sunday school. 11 o'clock our morning worship. The Jurisdictional Council of Pastors and Elders will begin at 10 o'clock a.m. in the fellowship hall. Please be in place and on time, all choir members, those traveling, 9 a.m., choir members, 9 a.m., please be here. For those traveling from the peninsula and the western part of our state, we know you have traveled great distance and had traffic and travel issues. Tomorrow should be a much better day because it's Saturday. So let us come forth tomorrow and God will bless us. The grace of God will strengthen us. God bless Mother Holmes who joined us tonight. Come on, let's celebrate our jurisdictional supervisor. God bless you, Mother Holmes. This time receive Dr. Connor. See comes, our final offerings have come. Well, they're yet coming. They're yet coming tonight. They're yet coming. They're yet coming. Did not Prophet Todd Hall not minister to us tonight? This is one of the greatest workers' meetings we've had in our history, recent history. And uh, thank you. Tonight, as I looked at the saints all over this building, we were strong last year, but we were much stronger tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, God is helping us. We look forward to a great day on tomorrow. As quickly as we can, accommodate the saints. Thought we had two terminals. Let's put those terminals to work. I want to let the saints out before the 11 o'clock hour. Saints, let us not waste time tonight. Let us quickly go to our vehicles in preparation for tomorrow morning. The Lord God bless you real good. Thank you so much. Everybody just lift that with me as these last offerings are coming in. Come on, choir, lift us up tonight. My storage is empty. Uh -huh. and I am available. Dr. Connor.
starts tomorrow at 10.30. We'll be here at the New Jerusalem Church of God in Christ, 118 Bishop Thurgood Avenue in Virginia Beach.